All right, so Proxmox 8.0 just dropped and we're gonna be doing some speed tests. So let's get started. Now, if you guys are interested in what system I'm running this on, I do have a video on that because I actually installed Proxmox on my mini PC and upgraded that as well. So yeah, I'll leave a link right over here. Otherwise, we're gonna jump right into it. Now, I'm on my desktop with my Proxmox and again, I'm running an 11th gen i7 mini PC, nothing crazy. So yeah, that's just about it. Now I am running on the latest version, which is 7.4-15, right before the 8.0 release a couple of days ago. Now I don't generally jump right to the edge or cutting edge repositories until it becomes a little bit more stable, but they do have some interesting stuff going on in the new uh, version. So heading over to their main website, which I'll leave a link down in the description below, it shows that uh, these are the main highlights. Uh, new Ceph enterprise repository, authentication realm system job, network resources, uh, this allows for more ACL or access control list and stuff. Uh, resource mapping, so it's easier to map your PCIe devices or USB devices, which it wasn't too bad before, uh, but I guess they updated that. They also have a secure lockout for two-factor authentications and a text-based user interface, which is pretty interesting. I do wanna check this out, but again, we're not, I'm more here for the last thing, which is the x86-64 V2 AES model as the new default CPU for VMs. Now, I run a lot of uh, AI models now, um, large language models and stuff like that, and I test them on my VM. I mainly run it on this machine, but not all the time when I need to test latest patches and stuff like that. I run that on my VM, but it's extremely slow. That's because we have to emulate a lot of the instructions, especially AES, we have to emulate a bunch of stuff. Now jumping into the operating system that I test this on, which is my Pop OS, I'm gonna show you the hardware and it's running on stock default KVM64 CPU, which again, according to this, it will change because the x86 V2 AES model is now the new default CPU. VMs created via the web interface. It will provide important extra features over the QMU64 and KVM64 and improve performance over many computing operations. So I currently use this, well, actually I don't have this normally on KVM64, but I'm gonna show you what I'm trying to test. So I'm gonna jump over to my console and pop right into my Pop OS. And in here, I am gonna jump right into, actually, I don't even need the files. Let me close that out. I am just gonna go into CD, mount into my other hard drive, if I could type, and start this. So this is the text uh, generation web UI, which I've shown on this channel, and I'll leave a link. This is basically my chat GPT. Now I'm gonna to try to start this using the KVM64 and automatically it will have an instruction fail core dump because it's missing some instructions. I already know this will happen because I've done this before. So what I ended up doing is I have to change it to the host CPU, which in turn it thinks it's an Intel 11th gen and then I have to add AES into it. So the real test begins in a few seconds. I'm gonna power this off. I'm just showing you guys this if, in case you guys are planning to run uh, AI and stuff like that off a of VM, you can. Not overly crazy performance, but it's doable. All right, so I have two cores here. I'm gonna edit this and jump over to host CPU. And I'm gonna click on the advanced options and scroll down to AES and then activates AES instructions set for hardware acceleration. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. Start this VM again. And I'm gonna go into console and I'm gonna do a quick speed test on this. Basically, I'm just gonna run one request through the AI and see how long it takes to generate. All right, let's pop back into here. So I'm gonna CD into MNT that, oh, there you go, start. I'm gonna give that a few seconds. It's just gonna pop up. And there you go, it loaded into the system. I'm just waiting. I am using a 13B Vacuna, the latest version, which is version 3.0 GGML, so it's CPU. And now everything is loaded, so I'm gonna pop into there and perform a request. 7860, I believe that's it. There you go. Uh, let's do something simple. Generate a Python script to print text. So normally on my computer, using this machine, it would have already spit out the answer. Not as fast as I want like uh, ChatGPT, but it does, it's already jumped into the conclusion already. Right now I'm using the VM, it's still thinking. And did it crash? It didn't crash, just 
give it some time. So while this is loading, I'm gonna show you what I mean. You see how these all have different instructions, AVX, SSE3, uh, Neon, FMA, all these other things are instruction sets that are later added onto a CPU. So originally back in the day when I first started using computers, we didn't even have MMX yet. So basically a CPU has a set of instructions that could compute faster internally. So you have plus, minus, divide, multiply, or whatever it is. And instead of writing a program to do that instruction, like one plus one, the CPU could do it internally, which in turn makes it a lot faster. Over the years, we added more instructions like uh, encryption, like AES or uh, SSE3 or MMX, you know, which allowed it to compute a lot faster. And the more instruction sets we have, the faster we could tell the CPU to process the information. Basically what I'm trying to say is that now with the new version of Approximax 8.0 and they're adding a different default CPU with version 2 AES, it should significantly improve speeds. I don't know. It could be like nothing because how I'm running it right now could be exactly the same speed as what it's going to provide, but I won't know until I try this. Here we have it uh, generated an output and it took 69 seconds. It used 61 tokens and the output is Sure, here's a simple Python script, print hello world. At the end of da, 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 you can replace this with your string. Okay, so it's simple. We, we know that it could print text through Python. Took 69 seconds, this was the seed. I'm not gonna record any of this. I'm just basically showing you guys, took 69 seconds. Now, I'm gonna shut this down because uh, we don't need this anymore. So I'm just gonna power this off because it's gonna power it off on the reboot anyway. So power this off. I'm gonna jump over to mini PVE over here, go into shell. And I'm not exactly sure what the commands are, but I think they have a script called seven to eight, which I've ran before. Let me see if there's like, app get da -da -da -da, seven to eight, upgrade instructions, PVE seven to eight. There's more involved in it. PVE, does it have it? Seven to eight, there, it's full. 728 full. Checking versions, running all this check. I don't know how long this is gonna take. This is my first time running this. It might even break my system. But again, it's not my production environment. This is more home lab that I play around with. I only have a few machines on here. So it's not critical. I do have backups of everything, but it's not critical if I do lose stuff. While this is running, I don't wanna close out a shell because if I close out a shell, I will lose this session. So whatever questions that have pop up, it, I might not be able to answer it. So what I'm gonna do is, Okay, running a second Proxmox and right over here, I'm just gonna leave this up so I could actually click on stuff and look around. Now, it did pop up with an error and the warning says that I have something running in the background, which, which means I have to go over here, uh, power this down. So I'm just gonna stop it. I'm not even too stressed about that. And then the Windows 11, I'm gonna go over here and stop this machine as well. And then pop back into the mini PVE shell and then run that same command again. Okay, so that doesn't seem to have worked because let's see. Again, don't follow these instructions. I just, I'm just following a guide that I see online. App update. It should be on the update and all the packages up to date. App this upgrade, which is the latest PVE version. Okay, I am running 7.4-15. Okay, I am on the latest stuff. I checked everything. Uh, maybe I have to do this, which converts my bullseye to bookworm, which is the latest Debian version. So let's do that. And now I could do... Uh, I already did this. Okay, so I am going to go in there. Nano apt source and no pve subscription bookworm 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 i'm good okay and then now uh do the app this app upgrade okay so i'm going to do app update app this upgrade and this should take me to the latest version it's got 800 megabytes of download that I need to do or installation that I have to do. So I'm gonna let this run and jump back in here when it gets to 8.0 and then we'll do the speed test again to see if it actually increased speed. All right, and there we have it. It actually took about like three or four minutes just to update, so it wasn't too bad. I did first notice uh, a new icon here, 
which is a local network. That's probably the new feature that they were talking about. Let me read this one because this seems to have a little bit easier of uh, reading. Let's see, host net where VPN access, da, 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 ACL. Yeah, that's probably what that is. Uh, let me go over to my Pop OS, go back to hardware, and I am gonna change this to what the fault should be, right? Hit okay. Um, that's not what I wanted. I wanted like default default. Oh, right here. X86 V2 AES QEMU. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as default and I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's gonna use this CPU instead and let's start it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then no harm, no foul. I know how to get the AI to work, but I really wanted to do the speed test on this to see if it, it booted up already. Okay, that was pretty quick. Supposedly it's increases performance and I don't know if I feel it yet, but it did boot up really fast. Uh, let's see if the CPU will work with that CD. Okay, so my drives is gone. I am such an idiot. I don't know why I did backslash instead of forward slash. So let's start this again. And if it starts, that means it's actually doing a pretty good um, CPU host that it will actually be available. And nope, it doesn't work with this. Uh, that kind of really sucked. So let's default back to what we were trying to do before and see if it has any type of performance increase because we did also update the kernel on the host system. So uh, let's go into hardware. Let's go here, edit, and I guess this seems to not want to work. Maybe I should recompile it. Uh, you know what? Let's leave it on here. Oops. Let's leave it on uh, AES version 2 and add AES to it. Hit OK. Start that. And let's see if that worked. And then if that didn't work, then we'll try the other way where we'll go back to the host system with AES. Because apparently it doesn't want to you know do what i wanted to do all right let's go to terminal this time i'll get this right let's see if it starts and it does not want to start illegal instructions so what i'm going to do now is actually just remove rf text generation web ui and then i'm going to do start linux again it is actually going to recompile everything for me and download all the files that i need this way I know it's going to compile for the CPU that I'm using. Okay, now the thing is, it starts without any models. I know that already. What I'm going to do now is pop over to that location, grab the model that I know works, go over to text generation web UI, go back to models and paste this here. And then we'll give it a try once this is finished. All right. Nope, still doesn't want to work. It could be also the model. Last chance, I'm going to go back to the default setup, which is host with AES. And I doubt it increased speed like that, but that's the only way to get it to run. So that's already better than not being able to have it run at all. Let's pop over to here, jump over to host system. We have AES already enabled. There you go, host flag plus AES, start. Okay, here we are. Let's see, CD, MNT. All right, there you go, it started. Okay, I am gonna copy and paste this, copy this. Refresh the site because it's a brand new instance. And then paste that back in, hit okay. And let's see how long this takes. I'm kind of upset that it didn't work out the way I wanted to. I thought it would just work out of the box, but I might still be switching all my other VMs to um, running that new hardware type. So instead of this being host, uh, like KVM over here, I will probably run into AES x86 and see if there's any increase or the thought or feel of increase. Otherwise, this test was pretty much useless then. Now again, this is not a tutorial on how to upgrade Proxmox 7 to 8. It was just a quick test that I wanted to do and then stick to 8.0 and see if I could get anything out of it. Uh, there are better tutorials out there than what I just did because I basically just followed somebody else doing it and just copied and pasted all the commands. And let's see, it is still generating right now and it just finished. 
and it took just about the same time, 69 seconds. Not much has changed. Anyway, that is it for me. Um, again, this is not a tutorial on how to upgrade it. It's just something I wanted to test to see if it did increase the speed because of the new kernel, uh, the new AES that they were adding in and a few other stuff. But yeah, it seems to be exactly the same speed as it was before. So that is it for me guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.